I'm going to open the video this week by telling you about my weekend trip to Wichita, Kansas, and I'm going to save in the studio for last. I occasionally get requests from people asking me to demonstrate how to time a sewing machine, and that's what I'm featuring on the In the Studio segment this week. But while timing a sewing machine isn't that hard, I wasn't able to compress the entire topic into three minutes, so we're going to have an extra long In the Studio. This past weekend, I got to go to a bluegrass festival in Wichita, Kansas. I took my husband Dale and we enjoyed seeing some great bands. One of the best parts of my weekend was meeting Chris Jones, who's a DJ on Sirius XM Radio on the Bluegrass Junction channel. And he's also a songwriter and band leader for the group Chris Jones and the Night Drivers. On Friday night, I got to see a band called the Steel Drivers and I am now a proud owner of a Steel Drivers t-shirt. If you've ever wondered what bluegrass would sound like if it started sneaking out at night and hanging around with the blues and southern rock, then you should totally check out the Steel Drivers. I think you'll like them. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting! This is a box with my DVDs in it. And it just came this morning. I've been waiting for it so I could film this segment and tell you all about my new DVD. Oh, here we go. I'm so excited. There it is. This is my new DVD, How to Make Cowboy Boots. It's an eight DVD box set, and it shows everything about the process from measuring the foot to choosing and fitting a last, all the way to finishing the heels. There's about 12 hours of video on eight DVDs, and it also comes with an accompanying book. In this book, here's the table of contents. We've got my measurement form, the order form. There are formulas for how to create the boot top. I've got a couple of charts in here, like a standard last measurement chart. And there are pattern templates for all the patterns that you need for making cowboy boots. I've been working on this project for over two and a half years and I am so happy that I can say it is finally finished and ready to order. If you're interested in purchasing my DVD and book set, just give me a call or check out my website. You can order through there. <laughs> Today I'm going to demonstrate how to time a sewing machine. This machine has been sitting over here for quite a while, all lonely and unused, just because it needed to be timed, and I finally decided to sit down and time it today. The first thing I've done is remove these little screws right here so that I can take out the throat plate underneath the needle. They're not hard to remove except for the back one is kind of hard to get into sometimes because it's up under the machine. This is one of those annoying machines that you have to remove the belt in order to tip it up. That belt off. Now I can tip it over so I can see the gut. And correct timing for any type of machine like this, a flatbed or a post machine, is bring the needle down all the way to its lowest position and then raise it 3 30 seconds of an inch. And at 3 30 seconds of an inch up, the point of the shuttle should be right in the middle of the needle and 1 16th of an inch above the eye. This is what I'm talking about with the point of the shuttle hook. This is the point right here. There's a curved, sharp thing and that's what comes around and grabs the thread. And that's what we're timing is making sure that passes the needle at exactly the right time and position so that it will grab the thread. Really the hardest part of this entire operation is making sure you raise the needle bar exactly 3 30 seconds of an inch. You can see that I have marks on the needle bar. Those are so handy if they're in the right place. Mine unfortunately are in completely the wrong place so they're doing me no good at all. This is what I do. I lower the needle bar all the way down to its lowest position to where it's, if it moves any more it'll be going up. And then on a piece of poster board, I measure a little strip of poster board that's exactly three, three thirty seconds of an inch wide. 
It's easier than trying to get a ruler up under here. And then I can just position that that strip of paper that I know is exactly 3 seconds of an inch. And with a pencil, I can draw right on the needle bar. The only bad thing about this is that pencil mark doesn't last too long. So sometimes you have to mark it again. Now before I raise the needle bar, this is why I have to raise the machine up so I can see underneath it. Right in here, inside that hole, there's a screw. And when I loosen that, there's also another one. I'm going to have to turn the wheel and find the other screw. What happens is there's a gear on this bar that connects to a gear right here that goes up and makes this part turn. I have to loosen those screws so I can disconnect those two gears so that this will move freely. All right, I've loosened the gears down there so that the shuttle moves freely and I've lowered the needle bar to exactly the right spot. And now I'm just going to position the shuttle hook until it's in exactly the right place. And this is the hard part. And that's holding it tightly in place. While you go under here and tighten the screw very, very tightly without dislodging anything. Okay, so I've got one screw tightened. Now those gears are turning together again. I'm just going to turn it until I spot the other screw. Tighten that one. And now if I did everything correctly and didn't let it slip, when I lower the needle bar to its lowest position and raise it back up to my mark, which is at 3 30 seconds of an inch, the shuttle hook should be right at the center of the needle. Okay, this looks good. I'm lowering the needle all the way down. Raising it to my mark. And it appears that the hook of the shuttle is right in the center of the needle where I want it. Now the next thing I'm going to check is to make sure that the point of the shuttle hook is exactly sixteenth of an inch above the eye. I actually think that needle bar is positioned just a hair low. It looks like the eye of the needle is about at least three thirty seconds of an inch below the shuttle hook instead of one sixteenth like it's supposed to be. So I'm going to reposition the needle bar. And to do that I'm going to take this plate off. Some machines actually have a hole where you can just reach in and get to the right screw without taking the plate off. So this screw right here is holding the needle bar in place. And I'm going to loosen that screw and try to ever so gently move the needle bar just a hair. It's so frustrating when you don't hold onto the needle bar and it just falls out of place, and then you have to figure out where to put it. Loosen that. Raise it just a hair. When you put it back, be sure and get this little notch on the bobbin case right up in this little notch on the throat plate. There we go. The really frustrating thing about this is you can't tell anything whether or not you've done it right. You can't tell until you put the whole machine back together and put the belt back on and start sewing and then you realize, oh wait, it's still not timed correctly and so you have to do it again and again and again and again. And when I first started learning, learning to time sewing machines, it usually took me an average of, of about 10 times to get it right. So don't be discouraged if you don't get it right the first time. Okay, now I'm gonna thread the machine. 
We'll see if it picks up thread. That's always a good sign. Then we'll see if it sews. That's an even better sign. Now let's see if it sews without skipping stitches. I guess it helps to turn it on, doesn't it? The machine sews better if you put the belt back on. Handy little tip there. Try this again. See if it sews without skipping stitches. Oh, hooray, I don't see any skip stitches. 